Okay, so we're going to solve this problem where we're interested in finding sets of four unit fractions which sum to one. And here we want our a, b, c, and d to all be distinct positive integers. So we'll start by considering the smallest integer a, so we've just put them in an arbitrary ordering here. And if a is our smallest integer, then that means that our 1 over a fraction is actually going to be our largest fraction contribution. And because a is smaller than b, c, and d, let's imagine we take a to be quite big, let's say a is 5, so our fraction is 1 fifth, then b, c, and d are all bigger than this, which means our fractions 1 over b, 1 over c, 1 over d, they would all be less than 1 fifth, and you can imagine the sum would be too small, it wouldn't be able to reach 1. But actually, even if we just took a greater than or equal to 3, let's consider what happens in the case where a is 3. Then our best case scenario would be that because b, c, and d all have to be distinct, we could have b is 4, c is 5, and d is 6. So this would be our best case scenario in terms of making the sum as big as possible. So we get a third plus a quarter plus a fifth plus a sixth. Now we know a third plus a sixth gives you a half, and plus a quarter gives you three quarters, and all you're left with is one fifth. So we know that three quarters plus a fifth, this is less than a quarter, so the total sum would actually be less than one. So here, if we take a3, or if we took a even bigger, then the sum would become even smaller. But even in the best case scenario where a is 3 and we take our b, c, and d as small as possible, this still doesn't work and our sum can't be as big as 1. So we can rule out a being greater than or equal to 3 then. And because a has to be a positive integer, the only other options left are a is 1 and a is 2. But we can rule out the case where a is 1, because then you just have 1 is equal to 1 over 1 plus and your 1 over b, 1 over c, and 1 over d terms would all just have to be 0, which doesn't work. So then the only possibility left is that a is equal to 2. So now we'll have a look at some similar arguments for b, c, and d. So next we'll have a look at how large we can make b so that the sum can still reach 1. And we know because a is equal to 2, our sum is then 1 is equal to a half plus 1 over b plus 1 over c plus 1 over d. So that tells us then that 1 over b plus 1 over c plus 1 over d has to be equal to a half. So we'll use this setup now to eliminate some values of b. If we were to take b greater than or equal to 6, for example, then your best case scenario is a 6th plus a 7th plus an 8th. This is the biggest possible sum you can make. But a 6th plus a 7th plus an 8th this is less than 3 sixths, which would be equal to a half. So actually, if we took b greater than or equal to 6, there's no way that our sum from these three terms would be equal to a half. So we can rule out b greater than or equal to 6. So what about b equals 5? Well, if b was equal to 5, our best case scenario in terms of making it all as large as possible would be a fifth plus a sixth plus a seventh, which is actually 107 over 210, which is greater than a half but it doesn't actually work. So we can now tune in on, let's think about when b is 5, let's imagine we take c equal to 6, and we'll try the next value for d. So b is 5, c is 6, let's see what happens if we take d equal to 8. So we're adding an 8th now. So then adding these three fractions would give you 118 over 240, which is actually less than a half now. So you can rule out all the possibilities where b is 5, and c is 6. And also we could rule out any cases where c is greater than or equal to 6 because then we would only be making this smaller so our sum would still be less than half in this case. So we've ruled out all the possibilities where b is 5 and c is greater than or equal to 6. You might be able to see this is actually a problem because c has to be greater than or equal to 6 if b is equal to 5 because c is greater than b. So here if b is 5 c can't be greater than or equal to 6 which means that there are actually no possibilities left. So we've ruled out not only b greater than or equal to 6, but also b equals 5. So b can't be greater than or equal to 5, which leaves us with the only options for b would be 1, 2, 3, and 4. But we know that a is equal to 2, and b has got to be greater than a. So all that's left then is b is equal to 3 or 4 as our two possibilities, which we'll explore in more detail now. First of all, when b is equal to 3, we have 1 is equal to a half plus a third plus 1 over c plus 1 over d, or 1 is equal to 5 sixths plus 1 over c plus 1 over d. So this tells you then that 1 over c plus 1 over d needs to be equal to 1 sixth. So just like before, we can get some upper bounds on our value of c. So we took c 
let's say greater than or equal to 12, you'd be able to see that 1 over c plus 1 over d, your best case scenario is a 12th plus a 13th. This is making it as large as possible, and this is still less than 2 twelfths or less than 1 sixth. So you can see that this doesn't work. So we rule out all the possibilities where c is greater than or equal to 12. Now we'll actually find some lower bounds on c, because here the fact that 1 over c plus 1 over d is equal to a sixth, this tells you that 1 over c has to be strictly less than 1 sixth, which is actually quite useful and quite restrictive here. So this tells you that c has got to be strictly greater than 6, or c is greater than or equal to 7, because it's going to be a positive integer. So then we'll just conclude for now, in the case where b is 3 then, that c has to lie between 7 and 11. So we'll deal with the values of d in a sec, but first we'll consider the case where b is 4, and then get some similar bounds on the values that c can take. So when b is 4, we need 1 equal to a half plus a quarter plus 1 over c plus 1 over d. So you can see that 1 over c plus 1 over d needs to give you a quarter. So now we can get some upper bounds on c. If we try c too large, so let's say c was greater than or equal to 8, then our best case scenario in terms of making 1 over c, 1 over d as large as possible will be 1 eighth plus 1 ninth, which is less than 2 eighths or less than 1 quarter. So this doesn't work. So you can conclude then that c can't be greater than or equal to 8. But in terms of our lower bound, we've already got that b is 4, and you know that c has got to be greater than b. So c is greater than 4. So I'll actually conclude just for now that in the case where b is 4, c has got to be greater than 4, so it's got to be less, greater than or equal to 5, and we also know it can't be greater than or equal to 8, so c just lies between 5 and 7. It's either going to be 5, 6, or 7 when b is 4. So now we've reached the fun bit where we actually get to generate some examples. We'll start with a is 2, b is 3, and c is 7. We'll just write this for shorthand 2, 3, 7 for our values of a, b, c respectively. So we need 1 over a plus 1 over b plus 1 over c plus 1 over d to be equal to 1. And here we know that a half plus a third plus a seventh, we can calculate this, and you get 41 over 42. So that tells you then that 1 over d has got to be the remaining 1 over 42, so that the sum is 1. So then we can conclude in this case that d is 42 is going to work when we've got a, b, c as 2, 3, and 7. So we've generated our first example, which works here. Let's try now 2, 3, and 8. So a half plus a third plus 1 eighth is going to give you, after adding them and simplifying, 23 over 24. So that tells you that 1 over d needs to be equal to this remaining 1 over 24. And we can take d as 24, which is an integer, and this also works. So this is looking promising so far. Let's try 2, 3, and 9. So a half plus a third plus 1 ninth, we can add and simplify, you get 17 over 18, so 1 over d has to be this remaining 1 18th, so we can take d is 18, and this will work. So this is looking really good, like perhaps they're all going to work, and if we try 2, 3, and 10, you have a half plus a third plus 1 tenth, you'll get 14 over 15, so 1 over d is the remaining 1 15th, and we can take d as 15 here, and this will also work with 2, 3, 10, and 15. So now something interesting happens when we try 2, 3, and where c is 11. So you have a half plus a third plus 1 eleventh, and when we calculate this, you'll get 61 over 66. So this would tell you then that your 1 over d has got to be equal to the remaining 5 66 which would tell you that d has to be 66 over 5. Of course, this is no longer an integer, so actually this case with 2, 3, and 11 isn't going to work because we can't find an integer value of d to make the sum of all the reciprocals equal to 1. So we've only got four cases that work then where b is 3. So now we'll have a look where b is 4 and see which ones work in that case. Now when b is 4, we'll start with the case 2, 4, and 5, where c is 5. So 2, 4, and 5 gives us a half plus a quarter plus a fifth, which is equal to 19 over 20. So this is great, because then 1 over d would need to be the remaining 1 20th, and we can take d as 20, which gives us a nice integer value. So 2, 4, 5, and 20 works, and gives us yet another solution. 
Let's try 2, 4 and 6 then. So you have a half plus a quarter plus 1 sixth. And when we calculate this, this is equal to 11 over 12. So our 1 over d would then have to be equal to this remaining 1 twelfth, which is great because we can take d as 12. So 2, 4, 6 and 12 gives us our sixth solution then to the equation. And finally, let's check 2, 4 and 7. So a half plus a quarter plus one seventh. This actually gives us a quite problematic value of 25 over 28. So like with our example where c was 11 earlier, we'd need, here we need our 1 over d needs to be 3 over 28, so d would have to be 28 over 3. But this isn't an integer, so unfortunately this example doesn't work with 2, 4 and 7. We can't find a value of d, so that the sum of each reciprocal gives us 1. So then just to conclude, in the case where b is 4, we've got another two solutions, so 2, 4, 5, and 20, and we've also got 2, 4, 6, and 12. So we've got four solutions when b is 3, plus another two when b is 4, giving us six distinct ways of writing 1 as the sum of four different unit fractions.